David Solomon, Stuart Brisgell here again. Welcome back to why we're pissed off at Media Week. We started off on Monday ranting, and today we're going after one of the most trusted media sources out there. Count your minutes, people. We're going to do 60 minutes and 15 in 10 seconds. You all ready? See you in 10. Hey everybody, welcome back. That was quick 10 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta tell you, on Monday, we went after the media because they are not keeping their word. They are letting the governor run away scot-free, who could do whatever he wants, and he doesn't care. That was example A. Today, Exhibit B is one of the most trusted institutions, or at least we thought was a trusted institution, 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes decided on the weekend to go after the governor of Florida, love him or hate him. It doesn't make a difference where you stand, Republican or Democrat, to absolutely lie and falsely report about anyone is not only wrong, it should be a crime. Mm -hmm. Stuart, why don't you take us through and give us a whole your whole feelings about all this? Oh, yeah. You know, I got lots of feelings. You think you all know. You know, one of the one of the previous trusted names in uh, uh, investigative journalism started in uh, in the United States version in Canada two years earlier uh, was sixty minutes, and most people don't even realize where when sixty minutes started out. You know, and you know, I get lectured on why am I giving the background because I think we have to understand that not only is news not our fathers and mothers' news networks how things have really changed. In 1968, Harry Reasoner and Mike Wallace debuted September that year. And this platform was 60 Minutes, where they would talk about three different 20-minute, with lots of commercials, investigated journalism, or gotcha, which was post-edited. So the difference in this time was, instead of running a live interview, they actually went back and edited it. But they edited it with two frames of mind, a left and a right, both sides of the brain, to give a fair and balanced look at what they were actually trying to talk about. And what I believe has happened here is, if you understand where we've come from, let's talk about where we are and what is healthy and what is not. And what is not healthy is this reporter, Sharon Alfonsi. It's our opinion, right? You know, this woman runs up with a huge cliche, how the wealthy cut the line, right? Reports corruption allegations, right? You know, when someone uses these terms, they've got a lot of weight, you know? These reporters are getting away with, you know, using words that are not based on facts. The allegations are by a second-rate reporter on a network that's become second-rate. And it's really deplorable. It's really horrible that an, uh, an institution like 60 Minutes get dragged into the mud like MSNBC, where you have nowhere to go to trust any news. You know, I decided to do some investigative journalism myself to find out what were these allegations of fraud. The allegations of fraud were Governor Ron DeSantis in a room of a dozen people talks about who would be the good new candidate that would best serve the elderly population, population in West Palm Beach. In a room of a dozen people, Democrats, Republicans, independents, right? There was no back room decision like at 60 Minutes where they decided to breach the trust that a news network should have. You know, in the public's eye, Ron, Governor Ron DeSantis found out that 90% of all senior citizens in Palm Beach County live within one mile of a Publix where they've got to get their milk, their eggs, most cases, their prescriptions, right? And let's talk about CVS and Walgreens. That's where they get medications, and that was done by whom? 
the federal government because that was across the entire country. But Palm Beach County is not the entire country. Yes, there's a few Walgreens and a few CVSs, but there's more Publixes. And every senior lives near one and every senior needs to eat. So as far as I'm concerned, the allegation is how Sharon Alfonsi made up and lied in her edited, grossly edited piece. And I think she should be removed from any, from any journalistic association and be reprimanded in the public forum by having to apologize that she's a liar to Governor Ron DeSantis. Because it really gives me no pleasure to call someone out as an absolute liar, political hack, because that's all she is. She's a political hack, another operative of a political party who isn't in business on giving the unbiased news. What are the facts? You see, the facts don't lie. The reporters do. Right, David? Well, you know what, Stuart, you hit the nail on the head and I'm, and I'm going to tell you something. And, you know, for me, it's like when your own group, your fellow, you know, journalists are calling you out. This was the Washington Post article. And I mean, you know, I know it's an op-ed piece, but op-ed pieces come from the editorial department. And when the editorial department is saying, you want to know why we are no longer trusting journalists? Look at 60 Minutes. And it's exactly what just Stuart just brought up here. It was the whole notion. That this was a completely meant to destroy, ruin, slander, whatever you want, term you want to use, a respected government official. Now, like I said at the beginning, it's not about whether you like him or not, you're Republican or Democrat. Stick to the facts. If yep. I mean, listen, I know that I twist up any story and make it sound really bad, but to what end? There has to be an agenda. And once again, 60 minutes, and they're sorry, 60 minutes. CBS and their parent company, Paramount, are all liable here. You're absolutely three levels of organizations are all liable. I don't, the reporter could do what she wants. Congratulations, because she got the endorsement from her superiors to do so, yeah. who got their approval from CBS, who gets their approval from, from Paramount. It's disgusting. Uh, uh, and what about the DNC party? You know, they want to add dollars. You see, hang on, hang on, David. You know what? CBS, a sole network, right, is not part of a mega group like Comcast, relies on these dollars from the political parties for advertisement. Love. So they weren't being altruistic. They weren't being an independent, unbiased news source. They oh, are a political hack job. Call it whatever you want. I mean, those are allegations and call it whatever you want. But I'm going yep. to tell you factually, this is what I'm sick and tired of and why I'm really crapping on. And again, I'll remind everybody, it's the national news, not local. If you pick up your local newspaper, folks, or listen to your local radio station, you have a lot more trust and faith in them because they are really caring about what you believe and what you want and what you need. These guys are only interested in, to Stuart's point, it's either ad dollars or agenda-based. There is no, nothing else in it. And at this point, I am ill at listening to 60 Minutes. Now, 60 Minutes was something my parents watched, my in-laws watched. They, they said, oh, you kind of come and listen to it. And you know what? I can't sit and watch this anymore when I know, when I know legitimately that they're going to lie and fabricate stuff. I mean, to falsely edit, falsely edit interviews. Come on, people. What do you think this is going to generate? You know, you know. but David, let, I just brought up on the screen on March 25th, right, which is prior to this article being posted on 60 Minutes, vaccines were also available at 150 CVS locations, 125 Walmart and Sam locations, more than 70 Winn-Dixie locations, soon to be over 600 Walgreen pharmacies, and every single one of those 730 public pharmacies across the state. Hang on a second. There's 150 CVS locations. There are 70 Windigs. There are 730 Publix Lord, locations. Lord, please, to quote an old colleague of mine, don't confuse matters with facts. Like it's really what you're doing now is just bringing out a fact, a good idea by a governor who's thinking of his state. Yeah. As opposed as opposed to people who are thinking of their own butts. Now, let me go with one more thing, folks. 
Now, you know, I don't know if you ever watch Sundays, you know, whether it's CNN or Fox or others, there's always one guy who's criticizing the other media. Okay, and, and you really, on CNN, it's Brian Stelter. And Brian Stelter likes to be, he calls himself like the hall monitor. He's like, he's gonna, he's the grand overseer, massive critic of anybody, of course, who's, God forbid, not liberal. But the guy, not only did he avoid talking about Cuomo and whom we talked about on Monday, <laughs> but in this case, you when mean, you mean the other, accused sex offender, right. Cuomo? Yes, yes. But when on, but imagine, when this guy calls himself the hall monitor and he's watching that over other media and he doesn't say a word about 60 minutes, he's condoning the action. And again, it goes back to the whole thing of why trust this media. I want to tell you that this morning, Governor DeSantis was on was on Fox News. OK, and he's sitting here and he was he, he got an opportunity to rebut. I mean, you're going to hear him on CNN. I don't know. You think CBS is going to give him a report? Uh, 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 no. No. Nope. He has to. He has to go. I mean, I mean, sixty minutes went out and slandered him, and his yep. attitude is like, guys, admit, admit that the vaccine story was false, that they simply, simply were false. Now you know what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen, folks. Tell me, right? Dave, what's going to happen? Here's what's going to happen in sixty minutes. Sometime down the road, can't tell you when, there'll be a piece at the end we're going to go, well, you know, we kind of made a little blunder here and this and that, but we stand by our story, so it sucks to be you. You know what, guys? Cutting the cord has become a big deal today. You yep. want to know why? Because we can't trust what we're seeing on television. There, are, People are running from... The broad, these broadcast news people, these cable news people to a controlled environment like a Netflix, Disney Plus and all that because they're sick and tired of the shoveled lies that you're getting. And again, not everyone, I, not everyone. No, not everyone. Some people love the no, fact yeah. that. Oh, hey, love, hey, listen, there are love. people, you're 100% right. There are people at the extremes who are looking for this kind of information so that they can turn around and discredit the so called other side. If you are an anti Republican, not an anti American, not an anti you know, good deeds person, an anti Republican, because you have to be either anti Republican or anti Democrat. I mean, there's God forbid you should be either or, and you know, you can't just be in the middle anymore. Because if you pick one side, then you're probably interested in only listening to that media and watching that. So for you, 60 minutes, if you're absolutely a hate on any form of conservatism, you should watch 60 minutes. They'll continue to shovel and feed you the information that you want to hear, not should hear, not need to hear, not the facts. It's the information you want to hear. So you're getting distorted information that when you go to the ballot box and you're going to make a decision, you realize your biased opinion, your jaded opinion is coming from the people who are trying to mind control you. <laughs> mind control you people. You know, is, it, is, is this, is this, H, this is Wells? This sounds like we're in a broad. No, it's Wells. Wells. It's George Orwell. It's George Orwell's 1984 all over again. It's, you know, it's people's, you know what, guys? We're all going to get dressed up the same. We're all going to look the same. We're all going to, if, if you never read George Orwell, please read 1984. You will see that this is mind control at its best. Guys, you, please, folks, I'm just saying to you, the only way, the only way to send the message is what I said on Monday, don't watch them I, I need to jump in dave we got a minute i want to start pushing if you go to www.therantnetwork.com i pulled up our podcast page where we archive and list all of our broadcasts if you want to listen to it because you don't have time to see it online and and again it may get pulled off one of those fancy networks like twitter and you know the likes uh, of people no, no, and, no, don't, and, give my, don't give my don't give my ideas don't give my ideas so, <laughs> so again i wanted to post it up here show you where it's at you know, we own our content and our content's being put up for you. We want you to understand that these are our opinions. We strongly believe that the news today is not in your best interest. And they're trying to sell political ads, which are the highest paying ad co content available for, other than the Super Bowl. And I think today the ad content is worth more because there's more of it than just one football game. 
listen, Ron DeSantis, he is a good governor. He's been a great governor in the state of Florida, and he shouldn't be reprimanded for doing what he believes is best for the state. He was duly elected. And 60 Minutes, do me a favor. I think you need to reevaluate your whole entire purpose. They you won. were once one they of the won. leading, leading they editorial, won. editorial, but gotcha networks that I watched and used to sit, like you said, David, Sunday, seven o'clock Eastern time, like religion with my mom and dad. And I got to tell you, it's disappointing. It's disheartening and it's disgusting on how they disgrace the guys like Walter Cronkite, the people that built this show and how these people like Sharon Alfonsi go ahead and have the right to destroy their good names. Sharon Alfonsi, if you're listening and you're out there, shame on you. Really. That's you know all I got to say. Shame on you. Shame at 60 Minutes. Shame on the producers and the executives at CBS who need to rethink their positions. Now, unfortunately, I don't see them ever rethinking because you know what? They think they have, they're, they're always on the right side of, always think that they're on the right side of society and law. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our 15 minutes. We want to thank you all very much for joining us. Please check out the ratnetwork.com on Friday. I'm tired of talking about American media. It's time for me to rip on Canadian national media. <laughs> I am sick and tired of watching. A, we, you know, we don't have a two-party system. We have a five-party system in Canada, or thereabouts, whatever you want to believe in. And yet, it's incredible to see how once again the media Go just figure. gives certain people a pass. Again, all about controlling the mind. Should Ladies I bring shoe polish? Should I bring shoe polish for that one? Uh, I don't think you should bring anything after that remark. On that note, folks, it's fr on Friday at noon. We are going to be back here Friday at noon, and I'll hope Stuart will explain that remark a little bit better. But we'll be back here Friday at noon Eastern. Please, folks, share this with your friends. We are not here to, we, you know, listen, we're here to share our opinions, but it's your frustrations. And I love when I get the comments from people. You're finally voicing how I feel. I'm glad I'm not alone. Share this with other people. Share this with your friends. Tell us, tell them about us. And we look forward to seeing you Friday noon Eastern live or check us out later on on Facebook.com on our the Rat Network page or as Stuart said, the Network.com. Have a great day.